Hello and welcome to this clip on buffer action in the blood. We'll cover how the carbonic acid hydrogen carbonate buffer system in the blood works and its significance in terms of health, and how we calculate the correct ratio of carbonic acid to hydrogen carbonate ions to ensure that the correct blood pH is maintained. And the clip will assume throughout that you're already comfortable with the action of a buffer and how we calculate the pH of a buffer. So when your respiring cells produce carbon dioxide as a waste product, the carbon dioxide reacts with the water in the blood plasma to create carbonic acid, which is H2CO3. And as you can see from the main equation, H2CO3 is a weak acid. When it dissociates, it produces H plus and hydrogen carbonate ions, HCO3 minus. So the constant supply of fresh carbon dioxide from respiration ensures there's always a supply of H2CO3, carbonic acid dissolved in the blood. Under normal circumstances, this can act as a buffer system with the concentration of HCO3 minus ions exceeding the concentration of H plus ions. Seeing as most of the body's metabolic waste products are acidic, the relatively high concentration of hydrogen carbonate reacts with the H plus ions from these waste products, preventing the blood pH from dropping. So this will obviously increase the H2CO3 levels in the blood. What the body does is it converts the H2CO3 to carbon dioxide and exhales the carbon dioxide through the lungs, so we get rid of the carbon dioxide waste. But it's utterly vital that the blood pH level doesn't move more than 0.3 of a pH value away from 7.4. This is because the pH levels for essential enzyme activity in cells must be maintained. If this essential enzyme activity is compromised by the pH level moving too high or too low, um, those processes may shut down and that could put a person in grave danger. So it's very, very important that uh, the blood pH doesn't move away from 7.4 if at all possible. Hence the function of the hydrogen carbonate carbonic acid buffer system. So if the blood becomes too acidic, a condition called acidosis, the hydrogen carbonate ions react with the excess H+, and they shift the position of equilibrium to the left. However, if the blood becomes too alkaline, a condition called alkalosis, the H plus formed from the dissociation of H2CO3 in the equation above reacts with the excess OH minus ions and shifts the position of equilibrium to the right. And a very important application of this buffer system is in medicine. Uh, any major medical procedure obviously involving blood transfusion, for example, or anaesthesia, uh, the buffer system has to, be dis has to be maintained and not disrupted because the conditions acidosis and alkalosis are quite serious uh, for reasons we talked about in the previous screen. So let's have a look at the calculations surrounding this particular buffer system. You start with the desired pH, which is obviously going to be 7.4. So if you insert 7.4 into the pH equation, 10 to the minus pH, then it tells you that the ideal concentration of hydrogen ions in the healthy blood should be 3.981 times 10 to the minus 8 moles per decimeter to the minus 3. So if we know the Ka value for um, carbonic acid, which happens to be 7.9 times 10 to the minus 7 moles per decimeter to the minus 3, we can work out the pKa for um, our carbonic acid, which is 6.1. We can also write out the Ka expression for this buffer, or for at least for the, the weak acid in the buffer, uh, by putting in H plus and HCO3 minus and H2CO3, as shown in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. So if we highlight the correct uh, ratio, which should be HCO3 minus concentration divided by H2CO3 concentration. So in other words, the correct ratio of um, hydrogen carbonate ions to carbonic acid. 
remembering of course that correctly buffered blood is dependent on the ratio of the concentrations of carbonic acid and hydrogen carbonate ions. We can say that the ratio is, this, is the same as the Ka value over the concentration of H+, both of which we have already. So if we put those numbers in, it gives us 20 divided by 1. So what this effectively means is for the blood to remain at pH 7.4, the hydrogen carbonate ion concentration must be 20 times bigger than the concentration of carbonic acid. So hopefully you found this uh, a useful introduction to how we can apply uh, buffers to a biological situation such as keeping the blood um, in the correct pH range. You can see clearly that it's all about the ratio of the weak acid to the conjugate base because that's key to the workings of the buffer. And obviously, hopefully, you'll also see that the ratios of those two will depend, sorry, the pH that the buffer maintains will depend on the correct ratio of those two uh, particular chemicals being maintained. So if you've got any queries about this, please do bring it in to your teacher or maybe have a chat to one of us during a subject extension at college. But for now, thanks for your time and see you soon.